If you're watching this channel, it's because you don't enjoy watching the world squander what Christendom built, but you want to do your part. And chances are you've heard me mention a great means by doing just that. Email made by and for Catholics. Check out fide.email. That's F-I-D-E-I dot -E email. Built for Catholic individuals, families, organizations, and groups. They're private, secure, and of course, they're Catholic. And they're offering two months off on your first year for an annual subscription if you enter the coupon code return to tradition without spaces that's the name of this channel without spaces at checkout if there's ever been a francis effect in the church it is this open hostility to anyone who has dubbed conservative or traditionally minded or traditionalist that hostility we see in the bishops in europe especially where they have so in gotten themselves entrenched in the secular values that dominate Europe, that anything that opposes that is to be not trusted and to be squashed as quickly as possible. They do not like any opposition to secularism and creeping secularism in the church. The essential program, when boiled down to it for Pope Francis, is to make the church more acceptable to the secular world. He calls it the full implementation of Vatican II, which, to be fair, Pope John XXIII said we needed to open the windows of the church to the world to let some fresh air in. And he did that in the 1960s, at a time when there were revolutionary movements in the secular world that overturned a lot of traditional values. We know this about the rise of impurity, for example, and immodesty that gripped the Western world, not starting in the 1960s, because it was a problem already, but it, that massively took off at that time. And we've seen this in the church in various different forms, this underlying attitude of needing to get with the times. John XXIII called for a permanent aggiornamento in the church, uh, meaning a permanent season of change. That's what that phrase means. And Francis, looking at the documents of Vatican II with John XXIII's interpretation of things in mind, has been trying to implement that. He has been very upfront with that permanent change, hence the synod on synodality. But one of these things that underlies all that is a hostility to not only traditional values, but to the traditional liturgy and to the traditional forms of worship as existed in the church that guided the church until the 1960s. You are aware of the room of the now openly admitted apostolic visitation that's planned for the FSSP, the Fraternal Society of St. Peter. We have an article today that kind of goes over a lot of this, but there is something that is missing in this discourse, and that is what the effect of apostolic visitations can be. We're not talking about the FSSP today. I have for you an inside scoop on something that requires a little context first. That's what we're going to talk about. And this inside scoop is that there are now traditional priests being authorized to be ordained in Europe by their bishop if they promise to never celebrate the traditional mass, ever, or to offer unicorn Novus Ordo masses, meaning they're not going to allow them to be offering truly reverent masses in the ordinary form. That is the plan, something I've been warning people about, that your unicorn Novus Ordo is going to go away. The Vatican hates it, and they want it to go away, because it's Catholic-looking. Let's go to context for from Info Vaticana headline. Commissioner Francis and his obsession with conservatives and traditionalists. Pope Francis's pontificate has been marked by a pastoral style geared toward reform and renewal of the church. However, in recent years, discontent has grown within the church over Francis's way of governing. This is this discontent is his attempt to sweep away the remnants of Catholicism in favor of his new religion his dialoguing and accompaniment and all this other nonsense in his synodal church. They refer to it as the new synodal church. It is language they use. I'm just quoting Cardinal Hollerich when he calls it the new synodal church. Hollerich being one of the key figures at the Synod on Synodality. And to make that happen, they have to sweep away the old religion forever, including all of its forms and worships and all the rest of it. Here are some details for you. On one particular group, this is out of France, in the Diocese of Freu Toulon. Apologies for mispronouncing that. I tried. I looked it up. But this group 
was one of the first suppressed in the last couple of years. A entire diocese where the bishop had more traditional vocations than anywhere in the world had an apostolic visitation, and he had a new bishop appointed while he was still sitting as bishop. They called it a coadjutor bishop, because the bishop was not young, and here soon he will retire. And this new bishop, who everybody lauded as, oh, he's conservative, so it'll be fine. He came in and he crushed the traditionalists in his diocese, completely crushed them. And that diocese is the subject of the story. So here we get some context. Quote, At the diocesan level, the Diocese of Bayonne in France has been the subject of recent apostolic visitations. Although officially such investigations are a routine measure of church governance, the perception is that dioceses with the conservative bishops are coming under more severe scrutiny under Francis's pontificate. Archbishop Marc Ayet, the Bishop of Bayonne, is known for his defense of traditional liturgy and his firm stance on moral issues, leading to speculation that these stances have put him in the Vatican's sights. The Diocese of Freu Toulon, led by Bishop Dominique Ray, was also the subject of an intervention by the Vatican, which ordered an apostolic visitation in 2022 and 2023. This intervention focused on the management of priestly ordinations and the reception of new religious communities, many of them linked to more traditional currents within the Church. The diocese has been noted in recent years for its openness to the diversity of charisms and the ordination of priests from different backgrounds, something that has generated tensions with the Vatican. As a result of the apostolic visit, priestly ordinations in the diocese were temporarily suspended, a measure that was interpreted by some as an attempt to limit the expansion of the diocese known for its alignment with more conservative positions. The intervention has been seen as part of a broader strategy by Pope Francis to exert greater control over dioceses that promote a traditionalist view of Catholicism. End quote. I'll return to that article sometime in the near future because it does a great job of showing why we should never downplay when conservative and traditionalist figures in the church are the subject of apostolic visitations. But I want to bring your attention to something else here. See, I received an email from a source who's actually in that diocese, the Diocese of Freu Toulon, who confided in me something that hasn't been reported in the news yet because the Vatican is trying desperately to keep clamps on it. My sources uh, will say within within or adjacent to the ranks of the seminarians there. And here's what this email had to say. It's very, very short, but it's a whopper. Quote, At the seminary in France, the coadjutor was told by the Vatican to give traditionalist seminarians or candidates to be ordained a document to sign agreeing not to say the old mass and not to include things from the old into the new, like prayers or ceremonies. End quote. Again, the coadjutor bishop is that new bishop appointed by Francis to really govern the diocese while until the old older bishop hits retirement age or passes away. This is a mechanism that's been used for a very long time in the church, but it's usually because there's a bishop who is not quite capable of doing his job as well as he should. So he gets a assistant bishop who will become the bishop once that bishop retires or passes away. That's usually how this works, but it can be used for evil means like we're seeing here. This coadjutor bishop was supposed to be a conservative, a tr like friendly to tradition. A lot of people cheered and thought this was the end of all the problems there. No. He crushed the traditional seminarians, and now he's forcing them to sign essentially a loyalty oath to modernism, to pinch incense to Caesar. How many of them are going to resist? Now, this document could, of course, be overturned by a good pope in the future, but what do you think the chances of that happening are? Honestly. That is what they're doing. That is the end game here. Is the ending of the traditional mass and also of your unicorn Novus Ordo masses. That's the end game. They said as much in their in Traditionus Custodis, the letter that went with it, as well as the responses at Dubia, which was the follow-up to, to Traditionus Custodis that happened four, four months later. That was stated explicitly people who are dedicated to the traditional mass will return to the Novus Ordo after being educated on how wonderful it is and how the ordinations of priests dedicated to the traditional mass will only happen with the permission of Rome. That's all in the documents. The sunset of the traditional mass is never explicitly explained, but it's said that they will, we are to return eventually to the Novus Ordo, meaning it's supposed to all end. All of it. And here you see them being a little more forward with it in France. Don't take your unicorn Novus Ordo for granted. 
They don't want reverent masses. They don't want masses offered in a way that actually show that we believe what our faith teaches us about the holy sacrifice of the mass. I'm curious what you have to say about this. So let me know in the comments, please. Do you you think those bishops, or those priests, should not sign that document? Do you think they should sign the document and not mean it? Pretty sure there'd be some sins involved in doing that. But do you think that's what they should do? Do you think they should hope they should sign the document, do what they're told, and hope that a future pope allows them to offer the traditional mass in the future? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, please. To like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. And if you've ever thought about supporting the work of Return to Tradition, now's a great time to do it. There are options in the description box below, Patreon, Subscribestar, the Join button. All those are options asked for by the audience. It helps keep these daily messages coming and is greatly appreciated. Pray for the bishops we talked about today. Pray for those priests who have to make that decision in France. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.